So I'm back once again with more science fiction and fancy wrap-ups, although this video is actually pretty heavy on the sci-fi, which I always say is my favorite genre, and then I go and read a bunch of fantasy. So finally, I'm back to the good stuff. This video is a combination of new releases that I got for review, as well as books for my own physical TBR. I'm working, as I mentioned, to get that down to zero or close to zero, and I've made a lot of progress in the last few weeks, so let's discuss it and get started. First, let's talk about The Deluge by Stephen Markley. This is a really chunky sci-fi thriller that is told over multiple perspectives. It's set in the near present day in a time where there are signs of climate change and also a lot of political unrest. And so within the story, we follow different people, but particularly the main starting event is there is a scientist who receives a death threat and the story progresses from there. This book, as I mentioned, is incredibly long. I believe it's over 900 pages, but this is also a book that I flew through. I could not stop reading. I found it to be so fascinating. This book gave me small similarities to The Swarm, which is a book I gushed about earlier this year and would definitely recommend. And this book, once again, deals with climate change. I will say that if you love the science in The Swarm, this one has less of it. It definitely leans more into the side of the thrillers, which thankfully is another genre I enjoy. So when sci-fi leads into thrillers, I'm okay with that. This book is one where you're just figuring out what is happening. Again, there's a lot of different perspectives and you're trying to figure out like where is the story going? And because it is so long, it does take a while to get there, but I found the writing, the narrative style to be so engrossing. It's very much a mystery of where the author is taking us. And I was completely down for the ride. I should mention that this book is highly politicized. So you do have the author making references to both the current and previous president. And there's a lot of conversations specifically revolving American politics. So if that's something that you try to avoid, keep that in mind. And I just generally enjoy this one. It's also very gritty. The characters are really unlikable. And I do think with a book like this, you're really not supposed to read it for the characters. Instead, they're really meant to progress the story. But if that bothers you, it's just very vulgar and gritty at times and definitely a lot of like sexual content and things that you might not expect in a book like this. So I do you recognize that this book is not going to be for everyone given the length, the topic, the style, the tone, all of that. There's so many things that could turn people off, but they're also all the things that made me love this book. So if you share my odd tastes in science fiction, if you love really chunky books that just move at a good pace, explore scientific ideas in a way that's kind of mysterious, a little bit different and off kilter, this is one I totally recommend. I definitely want to check out the author's backlist, Ohio, which I'm not even sure is science fiction, but I love this author's writing and I want to see more. Next up, we have The Terraformers by Annalise Newitz. This is a book that came out recently this year and I just received a review copy. This follows a woman named Destiny who is working on this planet with her pet moose. She's in charge of helping to terraform it. However, when she is working there, she discovers that there possibly are other living beings there and the story goes from there, let's say. And this is one that I would recommend to those of you that are already reading science fiction. I never want to be a gatekeeper, but I will be honest that I don't think that people who are just getting into science fiction will appreciate this one quite as much. Not to say that it's too complicated, but it's definitely written in a smart intellectual way that makes a lot of nods to the classics of the terraforming subgenre. So if you're one who has read a lot of the classics that involve the terraforming of another planet. I'll be getting to those within this video here, but if you love those stories, or maybe even if you don't love those stories and are looking for a more modern take, I think that this book is a very good response to that, which I think the author did very intentionally. This book has a lighter tone to it, Given the fact that this main character has a pet moose, you can probably tell that this book is a little bit goofy in places. It's not all outright silly like other books, but it's definitely weird. I have not at this point read Born by Jeff Vandermeer, but from everything that people describe in that book, I suspect that this one is another one that will have similar vibes and tones. So I like this one. It wasn't entirely to my taste in terms of the kind of science fiction I love, which tends to be, again, a lot darker and grittier, but in terms of of good execution. This book was excellent. I do recommend it. I can see the appeal and I enjoyed it a lot despite it not being to my taste, if that makes sense. So I do think a lot of you will enjoy it as well. Next, let's switch gears and talk about some backlist science fiction that I'm finally getting off my physical TBR. The first one is Foundation by Isaac Isimov, the first book in his series. And I've never read this before. I have read the author's other work, I, Robot, which I really enjoyed that short story collection. So I'm eager to try this one out. And I've been 
slowly dabbling through classic science fiction and finding out what I like, what I don't, and finding new favorites along the way. So I was hoping this one would be a favorite. If you don't know, the basic, very basic premise is that it's set in a future where there is this empire that has been ruling for a very long time. But like with every empire, historians recognize that eventually it will fall. And so the book starts out with this individual trying to make plans so that society can eventually bounce back after it eventually collapses. So that's the basic setup. I've made jokes to my friends that this book reads like it's written by an encyclopedia salesman, and I found the beginning really funny in a way that I shouldn't have. But overall, I like this one. I didn't love it as much as I hoped I would. I hoped it would be a five-star read, and it was kind of a soft four-star for me. And I did enjoy the parts where the characters are just sitting around and talking, which I think is a lot of people's complaints about science fiction when it comes to the classics. I didn't mind it. I liked it. But despite how short it was, I just didn't fall in love with it the way I wanted to. Definitely I'm going to reread this in the future and hopefully that experience will come with time and appreciation. So if you have thoughts on this one, which I suspect a lot of you do, I'd love to hear it down below. Next, I read Red Mars by Kim Stanley Robinson. And this is the classic terraforming book that I was briefly referencing early in this video. I actually read this before reading Terraformers and I do think that I benefited from reading in that order. And so in the story, of course, we follow the individuals that are going to colonize Mars is the first book in a trilogy that is very iconic and I will say that I love the parts about the science and technology of how to colonize a planet but I was surprised from the way that other people review these books I felt like there wasn't as much of that as I would have expected. Instead, in my opinion, the characters got in the way and specifically their relationships and who they were sleeping with, and it was kind of a turnoff. I definitely don't have to read science fiction, especially classics for the characters. I know that that is not the purpose. It's more about the ideas explored. So I was really surprised how much the characters got in the way of the story. So if you can't tell, I didn't really love this one. But again, I am glad I read it because it's so foundational. And again, when I went on to read Terraform, which I think is a bit of a response to books like that. I enjoyed that one so much more because I saw what they were doing to nod back to the original works like this one. So appreciate the fact that I've read it, but I'm ready to move on. At some point I'll continue on with the trilogy, but I'm not in a rush. Next is Leviathan by Scott Westerfield. This is actually a piece of young adult science fiction, which I do not normally read on my channel. I try to keep this channel specifically focused on adult work, but every once in a while a book just grabs my attention. This is one I wanted to read for for years. I have read this author's duology Secession, which is written for adults and loved it. So I've been curious to check out this one. This is a piece of alternate history. It's set at the beginning of the First World War. And this is told in the perspective of a young boy, actually a young boy and a young girl who are in different sides of this war. This again is an alternate history with aspects of steampunk because the one side, one faction uses steampunk technology and the other side uses what we would describe as biopunk technology so they use and manipulate animals to fight in the war. I thought that the premise of this was so interesting and because it is young adult I do give the genre or age group credit that they know how to write a really compelling story. So right from the beginning I was completely engaged. The story kicks off with a bang, the main character wakes up and is getting taken away and the story just never stops. The other character, the girl, actually masks himself to hide as a boy which is something that often would happen in that time period where um, not often, but if it would happen that a woman would want to take on a role that was only allowed for men, they might hide or pretend to be a man for the sake of going into battle. And so some interesting things going on there. I love the back and forth. And I should mention that I do recommend getting an actual physical copy of one of these books because it has beautiful drawings all throughout. And I really love that. I thought it added a lot to the story. I just had a lot of fun with this. This is the first in what I believe is a trilogy, so I might continue on. But I was pretty satisfied just as a standalone experience. So I'd recommend this if you're at all open to young adult books. This one's pretty great. And at least in this first book, there was no romance. It might be coming. Don't tell me. I don't want to know. But this one was more focused on the war and the battles and all the things I actually cared about. Next, let's talk about Dysphoria by Greg Egan. And this is a book I'm going to attempt to summarize or give you the basic premise and that it's set in a far-flung future where most of humanity has left their fleshy form and instead put their minds inside of machines to give them essentially the impact of being immortal. And that is where the story begins 
means this is a book or an author rather that I can't talk about on my channel without giving a plug to one of my favorite booktubers and friends, Michael from Fit to Be Read, because he is basically the fanboy for this author, cheering him on online and hand selling everyone I know, including myself, to go read this author. I've read a few of their books before and I've liked them, but I fully admit that while I like those other ones, I had issues with them, things that I didn't entirely enjoy about them. And it was simply the fact that while this author has amazingly cool ideas, I felt like in terms of narrative structure and character work, his work was a little bit substandard for my tastes and preferences because I still like to have a good story. This book completely changed my mind about that. I thought that the story was excellent, at least the story that I understood. Don't get me wrong, this author is so smart and I definitely felt like a kindergartner reading a high school grade 12 physics paper, but what I understood of the story I thought was so fascinating. And again, it's the kind of book that makes me want to stretch myself. It makes me want to go back and revisit some of the science and technology topics that I learned in school or refresh myself and seek out new information. And I think that is what makes an author so great is someone like this author and Neil Stevenson who make me excited about science and make me want to go back to school or do my own learning and that was exactly how I felt about this. I thought it was super interesting. The characters definitely are there to serve the purpose of the story but the story was really cool. I had so much fun reading this. It's so trippy. It's so smart and absolutely one that I want to reread so this is a library copy. I do want to get my own because I would love to read this one again and again. I adore this and would definitely recommend in my opinion this is a place to start with Greg Egan. I thought it is a perfect representation of everything that Michael describes about his work. And I also have some backlist science fiction that I received from Orbit because a new book is coming out. So the first book is Aurora Rising, the second book is Elysium Fire, and I think the third book is supposed to be coming out later this year, which is why they were sending out these backlist titles. This is a re-release of a series that Alistair Reynolds, I believe, wrote years ago and is now getting republished. I think it was originally called The Prefect. In this series, we follow a man who works as a prefect and he is essentially is this police or detective who is investigating crimes on this space and so within the story we follow them in the first book as there is a string of murders they're trying to figure out what is going on and there's a similar plot that happens in the second book. I feel like the books themselves, the first book is very much reminiscent of what you're going to get if you read the second book. So I think if you love book one definitely go on to book two. I do plan on checking out the third book even though I admit that I like this series but I didn't love it. As someone who loves mystery stories, detective stories, thrillers, horror, all of that, I always think that I'm going to love sci-fi thrillers a little bit more than I do when they come to these kind of setups. I found this one to be fine, but I think the mystery itself was all right and the character work was all right and the writing was good and so I liked a lot of it but I am someone at this point as I've said that I read so much that while I thought this book was good it was solid I would recommend it if you're a fan of his work or someone who loves sci-fi detective stories I don't think that it's reinventing the genre it didn't drop my jaw or change my life worldview anything like that so I had a good time with it when I had a good time with book two but I did find it to be a little bit straightforward a little bit lackluster and I'm definitely hoping that the final Final book can really wow things and kind of blow me out of the water because I like Alistair Reynolds but I'll admit I still haven't found a book that has just amazed me the way that other people feel about him online. And finally switching over to fantasy let's talk about The Basilisk Throne by Greg Keyes. This is the first book in a brand new debut epic fantasy series. This story is told over multiple perspectives one of them being this father who takes along his son onto the sea and then they also send his daughter off to another country to appease those individuals and the story is multifaceted. It's hard to summarize. It's one that definitely starts out with a really impactful event. Right at the beginning of the story, there's a young woman who is taken as a possession for another man, and the book starts out with very heavily implied sexual assault, and so it's a very rough book. I don't think this book technically qualifies as grim dark fantasy, but it certainly is epic fantasy with dark elements because of that, and I do recognize for other readers that there are those that are very turned off or are not impressed by authors that use sexual assault as a way to progress the story. I do recognize that but I also admit that I am someone who does really enjoy the Song of Ice and Fire series which has a lot of very similar elements within it. So I do have a high tolerance for really bad content and it's not something that turns me off a story but just be aware of that. Once you get past that main event, the story does progress and I would say that there's less dark elements later on. However, what does replace those is some really great action and adventure. I have said before, but I'm not someone who really gets excited about action scenes and fantasy books. 
I often struggle to really picture what is happening, even if it's well described, that it's just not the part of the story I find interesting to read, but that was not the case here. As I mentioned, a lot of this book takes place on the sea because of the main characters being out there. And I thought that the naval battles especially were so interesting in how they were done. And I was completely gripped in, which again, is not something I can always say. And so I really love those aspects to it. I found this book to be very compelling. I flew through it. It's not too long and there's definitely more that I want to see come, but this book gave a satisfying pausing place so that I don't feel like I'm missing out by reading this book now while I wait for the next one. And I like this one. If I had a complaint, it's the fact that while the characters were good, there were some characters that I felt to be a little bit weaker and I would have loved to see a little bit better development or different development. And that's just kind of my personal taste, especially the female characters. I really thought we were going to have a character with kind of a Daenerys-like arc from A Song of Ice and Fire. And I found her development particularly to be the most frustrating because it just felt like her development was based off of man saving her from a situation that didn't need to happen. So overall, I enjoyed this one. I would recommend it and I definitely want to see what's next to come. So that is it for this video here. I feel like I got through a lot of books. So if you enjoyed this, I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Which books are you planning on checking out for yourself? And I'd also love for you to stick around, subscribe if you enjoy this kind of thing. I do read a lot of science fiction, fantasy, as well as horror thrillers and other dark, creepy books. And if you want to help me out with this video, I appreciate a thumbs up. I appreciate if you drop an emoji in the comments, even if it's just a little spaceship. And if you want to help me out more, you can hit that little notification bell so that you never miss a video from me. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.